The other day we took a drive out to Newcastle Amlen to see the Typhi Valley Vintage Preservation Society's Steam and Vintage Show. These shows are always good fun as there are stationary engines, traction engines, vintage cars and motorcycles and there's normally a car boot sale where you find the most unusual items. Some of the items are very nicely laid out and clean and uh, pristine uh, while others are just tat and uh, usually the bargains and the interesting items are amongst the tat. One item that I bought was this 8 inch diameter diode aneroid barometer. I particularly like this instrument as for each one inch displacement of mercury the pointer travels four inches around the dial so it's quite sensitive uh, but there's every chance that it uh, had some sort of fault on it but I thought it was worth the risk. When I got the barometer home I sealed it in a large plastic bag and then squeezed the air in the bag and uh, unfortunately there was no displacement of the dial so it meant uh, that in fact that the unit was faulty. When I removed the glass the pointer and the dial I found that the return spring had rusted very dramatically and had failed in several places. Here you can see the rust on the spring that I've removed. But apart from that, there was no other obvious signs of damage. The aneroid mechanism connects to the dial spindle with a very fine chain, like a fusy chain, and that seemed to be free from damage, so I guess that had been oiled. I took the pointer spindle and uh, the damage spring out of the mechanism and I press the collet holding the spring off the spindle. Because I have a habit of uh, throwing these small components on the floor and losing them I decided to put a couple of uh, bits of cotton through the collet uh, just so <laughs> if, I, yeah, if I lose it hopefully I can find it uh, by the cotton. The cotton also stops it rolling under some piece of furniture. With the collet held with a toolmaker's clamp I managed to open up the clench that held the start of the spring and uh, made the end free. Now it was time to raid my clock components and fortunately I had a, a balance wheel with a spring still on it that uh, I hadn't thrown out and although this was uh, a heavier gauge spring and the original I decided to uh, give it a go and fit it to the original collet. Here you can see the new spring and here you can see a comparison with the old spring. The old spring had 13 turns to it so the new spring is uh, substantially uh, stiffer and uh, less resilient than the original one but it was the only one I had so I, I thought I'd give it a go. Here I've fixed the new spring to the old collet. In this photograph I've reassembled the mechanism with the uh, new spring in place but what I didn't know is that I had unwittingly connected up the mechanism in reverse. I only realised this when I reassembled the dial and pointer and when I put it in the plastic bag and squeezed it instead of the needle going up in pressure or the needle going up and indicating uh, an increase in pressure it was actually going negative so I had to take it apart and uh, reassemble it so that it operated in the correct direction. I failed to photograph the mechanism with the correct orientation uh, but I've indicated on this picture how it should be. 
Here you see when the bag is pressed the pointer moves in a clockwise direction indicating a positive going pressure. Here you can see the barometer hanging on the wall. I'm carrying out some trials. Fortunately the meteorological office is only a few hundred yards away from our home uh, so I'm able to get very accurate readings every hour and so far I can report that the instrument is better than 1% error which I think is quite remarkable for a, a piece of equipment that was probably made in the 1950s um, so thankfully the capsule is uh, airtight as uh, a failure with that would be a little bit difficult to uh, repair at home. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.